Rebecca Jernigan, your tour guide into discoveries, coming to you live on this beautiful planet Earth, from the heart of America to around the globe via the World Wide Web. Let's journey together into the realms of the known to the unknown in search of discoveries, enlightenment, knowledge, and truth. Welcome, everybody, to Journeys with Rebecca and JP. Uh, we will be uh, attempting to do a decent broadcast today. Um, um, my system's completely screwed up, but hopefully Google Plus should handle it. Um, although my, uh, my, oh God, how filthy my hands are. Sorry, uh, my line to, um, my line into the internet is a bit wobbly, but uh, Rebecca's should be pr uh, pretty strong. And um, since Rebecca's doing most of the talking on this show, uh, it will be fine. So without further ado, your host with the most, Rebecca Jernigan. Good afternoon, Rebecca. How are you? I'm fine, my dear. Better than you are. <laughs> it looks like, apparently, anyway. <laughs> um, we are. It's a Monday, right? It's a Monday. And we've all both got, like, what we call bad hair days going. Um, I want to let everyone know that um, right now you are looking at a little itty-bitty screen and Skype has decided it's going to do some kind of funky thing with your uh, system. You're, you've taken it offline and you've done all kinds of stuff with it. Uh, but we're glad to be here um, under some pretty strange circumstances, I guess you could say, today. So uh, that being said, today is all about the – we're going to continue on with the, con uh, the conversation on the construct. And last week – um, JP, you left off with wanting to do some comparisons of some movies and the construct, and, and maybe you've gotten uh, some of that uh, set up uh, so that you can ask the questions and we can answer them. The other thing that I wanted to do today as well is um, we've been talking about the, all the, about the negative side of the construct, and it's not really a negative. It's it's really about information, sharing information about what really controls us. Um, how do we get out of it? I, I shared a little bit of that last week. Um, but it, there's more that can be done, and there's more positivity uh, in all of this. And I, I want to make sure that before we end the show today that we certainly talk about some of the, the, the more positive aspects of what we can do kind of deprogram ourselves so to speak and uh, to relinquish the hold that the the uh, construct aka the matrix whatever people want to call it uh, have on us so that being yes. said okay yes. that being said I'm gonna ask you to start out with maybe some comparisons or, or what how you want to do the movie thing I know you have some ideas in mind so I'm gonna let you take it away for well a Okay, um, let me let me just uh, uh, turn my camera back on. I don't know how it's going to look. Uh, <laughs> I know uh, I am on a terrible, terrible little. Well, it's not a terrible little thing, but it's tiny. It's uh, not that old. Hang on, let me just. Uh, right, I'm getting a, a, a sound from you, Rebecca. That is like a sort of. Well, it's a well. It's like the mic's turned up high or something. Could you mute your mic for a moment? That's good. Yeah, that's great. That's going away. All right. So, good afternoon. <laughs> good afternoon. I, I can't even see if this is focused or not. Anyway, so I've got my uh, cheap white glasses and my uh, expensive white headphones. Uh, and uh, so, uh, the construct. Now, when the first time you, you um, one of the first times you hear the word construct is in the movie The Matrix. Um, and uh, Morpheus is um, talking to Neo. And he he says, "Are you ready for this?" And he says, "Try to relax." And back Jack in the head, ah! and uh, and um, <laughs> they always say, "Try to relax." <laughs> Try to relax when something terrible is happening to you. Um, but anyway, they uh, he's brought into like a blank version of the Matrix, and he said, "This is the construct," and it's the it's like the blank. 
uh, what I'd call a, um, a, an API, a applications programming interface, a um, a blank word document, essentially, is is uh, is how it's addressed. So um, that's the first reference uh, that I'd like to make to the construct. Is it's the uh, it's the foundation level of the uh, the great illusion. How about that? Okay, I have to remember to turn my mic on and off here. Indeed. Um, when you're looking at that, what you would call that API, maybe you could turn the speakers down back there so I don't hear myself talking. That'd be great. Is that better? Yeah, that's fabulous. Thank you, darling. Um, All right, I've, I've turned off my speakers. That, that should make things better. Um. When you're looking at the blank slate, the blank slate is really just really all part of the programming. It's different levels or layers, should we say. Um, you have to have a blank slate in order to start building on it. But I call it the space between the spaces. And I'm really s strictly speaking in linear terms for something that's not linear at all. That's something that is... Uh, is is you know quantum almost okay so when we're looking at that blank space and and we're talking about the construct there has to be something that's placed there and what's placed there and now we're talking about microscopic i mean micro microscopic space between the original construct and that which was layered over it so what was layered over it in the space that you're talking about is the beginnings of what was embedded into that space and as you go through the movie and he gets further and further along he realizes the different levels the different layers of the construct and you can see that in the movie itself you can see where there's different segments of it different sections of it uh, depending on the scene that you're looking at or I think you got an example on that well um, let's take a look at when he's in the park with the uh, with the female um, I can't think of her name but she was the one Trinity that, yes she was the one that told him uh, that he was the one and when he turned around then there was something entirely different there uh, when he came through with, oh it was the fight scene between him and Smith one of the fight scenes and he was in a oh, um, oh my gosh the hotel? I, no no that's not when he was in the hotel he they were outside but it wasn't the last movie they were outside and um, Oh, it was like on a concrete the, playground or something. Yes, that's it. That's it. So there's another example of that. Um, I mean, the list goes on. I mean, you you start when you start looking at it, you're going to see different sections, segments of the construct. It's just different layers or different parts of the programming, just much like if you would go into your own computer and look at all the different programs, how they're layered. Some of them interact with each other. Some of them are standalone, uh, but they all work within the um, confines of the CPU, of the actual, all the components that are put together that make up your computer. Okay? Make sense? Yep. Okay. That answer that question for you okay so there are layers in the in the in the construct and see you know as a programmer I have questions that, that are like uh, they create so the, the first of all the question is like okay so that's uh, the construct is like um, uh, in one way you could say it was like Microsoft Word in that you can create a new document and this document is a reality is that right can we talk a bit can we talk of it like that that somebody can choose right I'm going to create a new reality here uh, within my construct I start with a lump of construct material or uh, a construct email address or something something to start with 
and then I, I create a reality from it that I can then place humans into. Is that, is, is, I mean, am I going the right way with this? Um, well, you have to remember the humans were already here. Okay. The construct was built over what was already placed there that was originally intended to support life and regardless whether it was just human life or all life it was meant to support life um, to kind of be the glue so to speak to stick everything together so that it could flourish so that it could um, evolve it could grow it could become more conscious etc and so forth okay so the way that you're wording it is as if there was nothing here and the construct was placed the construct was placed when there were things already here now we're talking about millions and millions and millions of years ago when life was here even though we're just now find, finding out about some of the more ancient ones on this planet um, that's been here prior to the original thought process of when humans were actually here or scientific uh, information so with the humans being already here the construct was then hijacked and so what it was was they took a look at the original blueprints so to speak of this and decided that they could take this word document we're gonna call it that we're gonna say it's a word document and they decided to embellish upon it and what they did was they made it so that it was not user friendly for those that originally created the word document I'm trying to put this into software terms for you um, good good uh, so that it wasn't user friendly for uh, the originator shall we say the creators of the word document of the original word program and then somebody else came along and they could read the coding of this embellishment and they decided that they wanted more input into this program and they wanted it to to work a different way so they were able then to hijack the hijackers and so on and so forth and it became layer after layer of stuff and all of it was placed there for the purpose of greed of power of vanity of recognition of control all the negative things that you could think of was the reason why the original word document was embellished upon and in it whenever there was a new uh, embellishment added to the or user interface that was added to the program it then altered the original program and began you had to use it in that way but if you were um, able to understand that there was other um, other um, variables that were placed in there you could access that as well and those things were still being used it's like the original word program if you took all of that away there would be no word document there would be no word program so you have to have the original document there in order to be able to interface at all so all of these signals or shall we say all of these different embellishments or user interfaces that were added were being projected which would be like you looking at your computer screen and looking at all the different options that would be available for you in this word program what can you do with it well you can do this and that and another thing so it becomes very much like that so the worlds that are created or the illusion that is projected is a hodgepodge of all of the um all of those mm, oh all of those people that are 
No, well, they're, they're hacks. They're all hacks because they all hacked the original document. Uh, programmers from all the original programmers, right? The I'm sorry, the secondary programmers. Um, it, it's all there. You see, so they're they're all beaming out all these different programmers. Stuff is beaming out, and that's why the world has really been in in, in a ton of chaos. And that's why it's very difficult to find truth. That's why it's very difficult that you'll find people that are are going to speak the truth or know the truth. Um, and, and why their reality would be skewed uh, because of all the different signals or the different options that are being projected at any time. And, and when we all get into a program, uh, JP, we'll look at that program and we'll all use that program slightly different because it, we resonate with it uh, from a different level. Some will, will go through a program with ease. Other people will really struggle with it. Um, and they'll use a certain aspect of that program where somebody never uses it. Um, it's because that this is, we're talking about energy, and energy is signals. It's, it's, it's waves of information. So as these waves, pieces of waves of information are projected outwardsly, outwardly or really towards the, uh, the human race and, and all the beings here, um, you're going to have people that, react differently to it because they are unique individuals and they're also all under contract so to speak we're all under contract to be here and we're all going to resonate or be repelled as it were depending on the you know what's going on by what's being projected does that make sense okay so uh we're being um how uh, so going back to your talking heads your field of talking heads and the wires and the cables with all the goopy things and then um, the talking heads are not uh, who who are where up here I'm just trying to see where are the general people in the, all this are they the talking heads are they the people who are fed by the talking heads is that making sense uh, the talking heads are um what would you call them? Um, they're they're kind of like a sentinel. They're um, biological, artificial intelligence would be the best way to describe them. Okay. okay. So they you live. Know, and I keep thinking of that Pink Floyd cover that's got this weird head on it. Ah, it's I don't like a, a metal head. I'll see if I can find a, a copy. Oh, of that it. would be yeah. interesting because I don't, I don't remember that right off, right off the bat. There, I don't remember the the Pink Floyd album, the one you're talking about. So I'd be interested in in seeing that. Yeah, absolutely. So, so how do so how do the talking heads relate to the people? Are they kind of watching the people? The, the talking heads don't relate to anything. They are simply the receivers and transmitters of information. Uh, what their job is, is to make sure that the conduits that they are running in and out um, are kept running. Basically, that's all they're doing is they're just processing in information in, information out. But they're also, some of them within that field of talking heads are uh, guards, as it were, uh, they have a little bit more sophisticated programming in as much as if they sense somebody messing with them or they sense danger or whatever you wish to say about that, that there would be an alarm system that would be raised um, and then the uh, perpetrators would be attacked in a way, um, not necessarily in physical, like being shot or or. Uh, knifed or anything like that. It's it's more of a an energetic burst of uh, negative um, negative energetics being that person being subjected to if they try to interfere with um, the input and the output of information. Kind of like black ice. You know every black every. Ice. Yeah, like, well, every computer has a, well, most computers have a, uh, a back door, right, where people can hack into it, right? 
Well, this would be um, much like the computer program if you wanted to hack into it, um, which means it's to interfere with it. It has protocols to shut you down. Some people call that black ice. I mean, it's just a term. It's an old, old term. Maybe you're not even familiar with it, but that's what we used to call it. And it is black ice. It, well, yeah. It attacks. It's a. It's it's it, it creeps. You you can't tell where it's where it is. Uh, I've I've literally uh, ridden a motorbike over black ice, and sure. you don't know. I'm driving one second, one moment, and the next moment I'm looking up at the sky, and there is nothing in between. That's black ice. I see what you mean. Yeah. So it has a the talking heads are the kind of the built-in mechanism, but they're like anything else. If you can shut the energy down from a different source. If they can't get energy in or if they can't transmit energy out, then effectively what it would do is back them up because they're, 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 they're programmed to be repetitive, right? They're programmed as, as cycling. They have to cycle in and out, in and out, in and out. It's just a constant stream. So if you block that stream, something is going to give, and it, this is how they can be... Hmm, slowed down, backed, backed up, um, they, it, it can be dealt with. I mean, you know, with any technology, you have a way of getting in and around it because the whoever built it created this technology, right? Um, there's somebody else that knows more about it than that, than its original thing. And it is kind of really, when you think about it, this pretty outdated technology. But no one has ever talked about this before was the field of the talking heads and what their real job was. Oh. Well, I found Vision Bell, um, and uh, I've just my screen now, uh, so you can see what I'm talking about. Right, just give this. There's a, there's a really weird uh, sound that comes from your end, but uh, I don't think there's anything I can do. It's when I speak. Um, Right, so there we go. Start screen share. There we go. And if we, I hope I haven't crashed Google now. All right, no, it's still working. Um, thank you. And uh, I now screen share. It's awfully slow. <laughs> it's so slow. Oh dear, it's so slow. Come on, come on, yeah. It takes. It's like f it, it. It fades in in five little steps, and you can see it. You know. Oh man, maybe not. Come on. Just share my screen. Anyway, so um, I was reminded, like you were sort of talking of of these uh, these heads, and and um, these. This is a. It's a little illusory. It's a. It's a sort of optical illusion thing. It's one of the, you know typical Pink Floyd thing. Um, that uh is it gonna do it no i i don't seem to be able to do this however it's the cover of the division bell if you find the division bell cover you will we'll be able to see it. i might uh, see if i can post it in the chat room but uh it's it's just not happening here for me um this machine has some very strange little, uh, uh, little quirks like i'll click on a button and then as i drag it across the button disappears. <laughs> so, anyway, Rebecca, let's go back. To, let's go back to the construct. So there's. Um... Ah, I see them. <coughs> oh, I is that happening? No, I have. I have. Uh, yeah. I have. Uh, I have it. Pink Floyd. Um, right. I have to be careful what I open up here because I might play music, and I don't need to be doing that. Mm -hmm. Let's see here. But yes, indeed, the division bell is the uh, the name of this uh, album, and um, it's uh, it's these metal heads talking to each other. But it, actually, they're they're real things. They're, it's not a it's not a um, it's not a drawing or anything. It's actually some sculptor sculpture, a metal sculpture is, that they made. Yeah, it is a them. sculpture, and uh, it's similar. Yeah. So you wonder where these people got that from, huh? Fascinating. There's no, nothing going on nowhere. <laughs> Floyd, you know, Floyd are very, you know, one of the most 
to me, one of the most perceptive bands or um, music uh, groups, lyrical groups that uh, have been around in 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 my life, Tim. Anyway, all right. all right, I seem to be staring. How does that work? All right, stop that. <laughs> I I click a command like five minutes ago, and it's now coming up with the button. <laughs> so I don't know what's going. On. Right. Okay. So um, so we've got uh, uh, and. I'm trying to I'm trying to get get kind of get it into into terms that I can understand and perhaps then uh, sort of go on to reflect back to you uh, the ideas that I'm talking about. If um, so, what we what we get out of today that the the construct uh, humans were here before the construct. Uh, uh, were humans here before the construct or, or human came? Uh, and then some built the construct around the humans the in humans order to were, nurture like, them? Yes, the humans were created, and almost instantly so was the construct. But I am going to say this over and over and over and over again. The original intention and building of the construct was made to support life, to nurture life, and to leave us alone to let us grow. And we were so left alone. And then, long time later, the Galactic War started in this galaxy, then in this universe, and then in this universe, and then this galaxy, and then in this solar system. It just kept moving more and more towards the Earth. And nothing else was done with the construct ever by the original creators of it because they had mm, fulfilled what they were meant to fulfill and to do what they were meant to do and build what they were meant to build. Construction to contractors. Yes, and it was not within their scope to intervene and we have heard that now you all have heard that many of you have heard that through the years oh yes that we have we were left because we were not supposed to be messed with so we the thing is is we don't want to become angry at those that left us to our own devices because once they knew that the hijacking had begun there was an earnest meeting so to speak and I'm talking a little bit outside of all of this now um, I'm and I'm putting this into very human terms this is not what they call it but just so for the sake of ease of understanding uh, there was meetings by many councils from many different hierarchies from many different areas um, species races dimensions you name it to figure out what could be done without breaking the universal laws that were put into place for this universe um, to assist us in freeing us from what has happened unknowingly to us because we all came here with amnesia for a reason we can't grow something unless we have to work at it we have to make it grow and we have to realize these things if we were all higher level beings entering into this earth plane into this wheel of incarnation and reincarnation um, we would then be bringing forth our same pieces of information that we already knew so therefore we would be creating a world much like we all came from and our old belief not, systems right and that wasn't the point behind it so that gives you a little bit more insight as to why it was created to begin with, why we came here with amnesia. Um, you know, a lot of people feel very angry because we came here with amnesia. Well, that was that was the intent. That was the intent. And so for everyone that agreed to be here with amnesia, it's because we agreed to be here. So there's, it's, there's not a negative with that, none whatsoever. But we're reaching higher levels of consciousness. Now, the other thing is, is that in in between all of this, one of the things that they did allow, um, that did happen with, with many beings that started to incarnate and reincarnate over and over again, 
is that that the, the layers of amnesia begin to peel back um, and that's why you'll see many children now that are born with full past life memories they 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 talk about being in different planets they talk about different races they talk about all kinds of different things um, because those are the ones that were able to break free of the construct and they come in outside of it through if you wish to call it this through a hole through a tear through whatever you wish to call it through a puncture in it whatever the case may be that's why there's many people who are uh, even even greater than than uh, most psychics and mediums are today we've had prophets we've had um, many people that have tons of information that have come through the millennia of lifetimes here right um, and the reason is is because they're able to puncture through or they've incarnated enough and they've kept enough of whatever their memories were from the previous life cycles that they're able to access it or at least figure out how to access it this information so that it's it's about releasing ourselves from the hole that we did not know was placed upon us the illusion the illusion which is a journey from here to here and can be the longest journey ever It's not about the destination. So, and every thousand mile journey starts with the first step. So where do we go? Where, I mean, it starts, I mean, there is a direction with every journey. You start off with a direction. How do you get to the, how do you find the direction? Let, let, well, the, let's talk a little bit about that. Well, uh, and again, you know, a lot of people are looking for a real cut and dried answer, but there is no such thing in when we're talking about things like this. Um, everybody's an individual, JP. Uh, everybody's an individual. So what they can garner out of this will be just as individual as, as, as the words that I'm speaking, because it's obviously not plagiarized, right? <laughs> so... When, when we talk about where do we go from here, what we're talking about is looking at your world around you and what really part of that is is, is part of the construct. Television is. Uh, television is definitely a huge part of the construct. It's uh, mindless entertainment. Um, video games are the same thing. Although I will tell you is that video games are a little bit more unusual in as much as we figure out about the computer programming that goes in it, um, there's people that have been able to access other realms of information that would not have been available to them had they have not been a computer programmer. So f for that, the technology behind the computers and computer programmers are uh, from what they have shown me, I mean, our technology in regards to that is is the difference between using a um, a typewriter and a computer keyboard. As far as where do you type, what it, what happens on the other end of it, right? Um, it's it's really far removed. I mean, and we've talked about this. I've talked about this before about technology here we are you know cars have been around for 120 130 years whatever it is and we're still using gasoline um, hello you know who does that make sense exactly. to tech technology speaking so what they've done is they've put all these bells and whistles in the vehicles they've made them look all sporty and fun and they you know they make them all sparkly and everything so that people will want to purchase them Unfortunately, we don't have a lot of other choices until we can figure out how we can, first of all, is teleport, <laughs> instant teleportation. Exactly. Or, so you or, don't need a car. Right. Or roads. Right, right. Or indeed shops, because you could teleport exactly where the food was, and then you can teleport back. Right, right. If you needed food. Right, if you even needed that to survive. Exactly, exactly. But this, this planet is set up so that we, we do have... Uh, we have air to breathe, we have water to drink and food to eat and shelter and clothing to keep us warm or cool depending on where you live in the region. It also protects you from, uh, you know, insects, uh, other things that may be not so uh, welcoming to the human in their physical form. 
Um, that being said, that that was part of the the creation here is that this was an extremely diverse life form. Uh, this this particular planet, she's very very diverse. If you look at at all the different regions that we have on this planet, um, from one extreme to the other, and then some, and what we haven't explored <coughs> in, uh, underneath the, the oceans as, as well as underneath the surface. Uh, I'm talking about ground surface now. Um, so much has we, that we don't even know yet. We haven't even begun to explore our own little planet here, and 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 really how much diversity that there is here. But its original intent was was so that we would need water, we would need food, and we would need shelter, and we would need coverings of some call it clothing, whatever. Uh, the rest of it is inconsequential. Um, but we don't live in tribes anymore. Most of us don't. Um, we we don't grow our own food uh we we certainly have become very far removed from each other individually speaking most of us don't even know our neighbors or their names uh we certainly aren't close with them as a matter of fact we're taught to be suspicious of everybody um you know this is part of the construct the other part of the construct is what they've done in the in the public school systems it didn't used to be that way then they mandated everybody had to go to school which is a negative or positive? I don't know. I mean, that that really is one of those things that, if the school system itself was designed differently, I think everybody should be able to read or uh, to sing, uh, to be able to read music if they wanted to, or to paint, they, they, to do numbers, whatever it works for them. But I think it needs to be an individual choice. But when you go to the school systems here in America, I don't know what it's like in any other country. Uh, but most of them have metal detectors. Their children are locked in like a prison uh, during the day. Um, they, they're they herded like elephants. They start them out, in, I mean, right from preschool, and everybody has to line up, and they're herded in one place and herded into another. They're on a very strict time schedule, so we've got that clock thing going on, which is uh, very controlling. The clock thing, when we look at it, is extremely controlling. Uh, as well as, okay, it's 2 o'clock in the afternoon, it's time to take a nap, and everybody's supposed to just stop, no matter if they feel like taking a nap or not, and that's what they're supposed to do, or it's 11 a.m., we're supposed to eat our lunch, so everybody eats lunch, whether you want to or not. So it's building in this this idea that we are no longer uh, connected to our physical form. Um, I tell people, eat when you're hungry and don't eat when you're not. Sleep when you're tired, don't sleep when you aren't. Um, wake up when you when you wake up and go to sleep when you go to sleep if we were all on our natural rhythms this world would be very much synchronized with each other we'd be very much in harmony because we wouldn't be battling our own selves and we don't even understand we're battling our own selves uh, the person that okay. wakes up yeah the person that wakes up perpetually pissed off every day uh, because their alarm clock is going off. That's somebody that doesn't need to live with an alarm clock going off in their ear every morning if it pisses them off that bad, right? That means something there is triggering a negative, and nobody should wake up like that every single day of their life. There's something wrong, but we're not taught to look within. We're taught to look outside of ourselves as to what's causing that. We blame the alarm clock. We blame our job. We blame our husband, our wife, our children, whatever the case may be. And that's part of the construct. It's to keep you in a state of um, definite slavery. And slavery is one of those things is you do as I say when I tell you to do it. And it's not like we have somebody standing over us, an overseer standing over us with a, a whip telling us what time we need to get up. We have an alarm clock to do that. We have a job that we go to that says, you must be here. And if you're not here, then you lose your job. So it's always threats and intimidation, which means they take away your food. They take away your water. They take away the money that allows you to buy the food, which is what we need. This is how this planet was designed. So when they start threatening your very life um, existence, this is what happens to humanity. Humanity loses a part of itself, and then we get into we get into all the rest of the mechanics of it. You know, not only do we have TV, but you know, you're supposed to brush your teeth at a certain time. You're supposed to go to school at a certain time, go to work at a certain time, eat at a certain time. Well, you know, let's talk about all the, you know, the the different in, indoctrinations that they do throughout throughout our 
high school and grade school and elementary school stuff. I mean, they indoctrinate you into everything, into how to stand up and be good little sheeple, how to, how to repeat and memorize things. Not how you don't really learn. Your memorization skills are what's being tested. Not your knowledge, not your intelligence, not your drive, not your ambition, not the soul or the spirit of who you are. It takes away from the very nature of who we all are. That's what the construct does. That's what it was meant to do once it was hijacked, was to take away the individual's identity as well as make us individualized from everybody else, that we're so different from everybody else that we can't get along with each other, or that we're better than each other from each other. And that doesn't matter if you're male or female, what color you are, what religion you are, it doesn't matter. It's all been very carefully devised and it's been added on to, this program has been added on to and added on to, and it fits the time and it, it shifts us, it shifts us from one age to another, and I'm not talking about from the Piscean Age to the Aquarian Age. I'm talking about from the Renaissance. We have the uh, Dark Ages. We have the Renaissance. We have all of those different ages, right, through our history that has really been concocted and driven by this construct called this, – this thing called the construct, the hijacked construct. Is that making sense? It is beginning to um – fit in to the places where, you know, uh, where I, you know, think, hmm, what's doing that? Um, so, a thing that, that creates the, um, the separation between humans, is it also creating frequencies somehow that block our ability to well, to not hear it, to listen around the back of it, if you like. Like, for instance, <laughs> even as we speak, there's this in enormous sound that is preventing me from hearing my own thoughts when I'm speaking to you. Um, but I'm, I'm transmitting telepathically to you, and I'm also transmitting with words. Is the construct the thing that prevents the telepathic communication from being received? The construct is the thing that uh, does not allow for a clear signal between you and me so that two people can telepathically communicate um, through the disruptions of the energetic field. Uh, that was part of what I was talking about with the construct with all the uh, – it, it rides on the natural grid system that we have here. Uh, it's been sheathed. so. If you were able to get through the sheathing and sense the real grid system here, we would all be able to communicate much more easily. It still would be something we would have to learn because we're not used to it. But learning what does that signal feel like when JP's talking to me or I'm talking to him telepathically? How do I really perceive that? Do I hear his voice? Do I just know what he's saying? Do I see him as well? Um, etc and so forth we're not trained for that yet that doesn't mean we can't be so even if we were making connection would we know that for sure I don't know only because we're not used to it however I would tell you is that we would feel something because it would be different than how we would normally feel something if our telepathic communication could reach each other does that make sense Exactly, and this, this is this is kind of where I'm getting to. That um, from what I can see, the uh, the way that the humanity has been created as a slave race is exactly by this method: is that the the ability to receive telepathy clearly, um, to be naturally clairvoyant, clairsentient, clair uh, whatever the other one is, clairvoyant, audient, audience, sentient, anyway, all those, all those. All those. Um, is is really something that is is like um, that we used to have that has been taken away from us. This is this is my feeling about this because you know you see all these super you know going back to movies um, and you see all these superheroes who somehow haven't been afflicted in that way. I mean, for instance, uh, there's Superman, right? We always like like to talk about Superman because he's, he's you know he's easy to to describe. Everybody gets him. 
Um, he comes from another planet where gravity is different, so he can fly. Well, maybe. Um, it's just that he doesn't believe in our gravity. It's like, if his gravity is so heavy, and our gravity is so light, then he doesn't need to believe in ours. So whether he's dominant, you know, he can stand on the ground, but there's a point when he can release his belief of the gravity and fly. Not only that, he, um, he has, a, well, there's the X-ray vision, so he can see behind reality. Um, he's got heat vision, so he can remotely influence reality through his eyes. And I, I think that a lot of these things are like DNA strands, they, what they talk about, you know, these different DNA strands from different races. The Superman is one of the races. He's like maybe uh, a Titan or, uh, you know, a tall white or something like that. What do you think? Uh Oh, well, I, I'm uh, I'm right there with you. Listen, you know, when you're talking about, like, we're going to use Superman still. Um, he, even though he was not raised, according to the story, right, whether it's fictional or not, he wasn't raised on his planet. He was raised here on this planet Earth. But he has DNA within him. He has a gene pool memory, shall we say, that teaches him naturally what's going on and once he learns that he has these abilities and he stretches himself and he starts believing in what he can do that nobody else can do then he becomes his own person he becomes that person that come from Krypton 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 yes Krypton or wherever it is that he came from so it's just like telepathic communication we were just talking about that we believe that we aren't able to do it because we have not been trained for it. He had to train, according to the story, Superman had to train, even though he trained himself, to be able to run fast, 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 and to be able to fly, and to be able to use his x-ray vision. Most of it he fell over, or kind of tripped into it, uh, because he wasn't taught that it, it, their way was the only way either. So he had a different viewpoint with that because it's part of his DNA and some of that was already activated and so I would have to agree with you that that these superheroes I'm a big fan of these superheroes because I do believe that there's some truth in all of that that these are not just figments of people's imaginations that they happen to write a script for and a movie is made I am I'm sure there's a lot of people that will disagree with me um, but I believe that that doesn't come from fantasy some made-up thing I believe that it's some kind of a memory that they've tapped into whether they recognize it as a memory or not um, or they've tapped into a, a storyline uh, that's outside of their normal storyline shall we say uh, and these these beings that have superpowers that come from super some some other places I truly believe that they do exist I truly believe that they do exist somewhere. Somewhere they do. Um, it's not just all made up. Somewhere there is truth to all things that we are seeing. And that's the other portion of this, is that if there is a piece of truth to anything that we are experiencing at all, and it's just being covered up by all the glitz and the glamour, then we're not seeing the truth for the truth of what it is. We're only seeing part of what we want to see. So all these movies, I would tell you is that absolutely I believe that they could all be possible. I do. So, superhero abilities are simply DNA memories reactivated. Some. For some, yes. Not all of us have all of those mm -hmm. things available to us. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But sure, but, it's part of the gene pool, man. And a lot of these TV shows, like, uh, I mean, the one that strikes me is Heroes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and also Fringe. Yes. That they were... These are, this, they're basically talking about these MK Ultra experiments where they're actually trying to... Um, like like the thing that Dave was involved in, Project Talent and these things, where they were stimulating DNA. You know, he, sa he always used to say, you know, is a Sicilian and Celtic. And they, you know, those gene pools are, have certain characteristics that they would then work on, those talents. Like, for instance, um, 
African people are really good at drumming. Um, Irish people are really good at singing. You know, they have they have certain qualities that stand out. German people are really good at you know doing what Germans do. You know, everybody's got their thing, and if you can stimulate perhaps dormant DNA and all that, you will find that you end up with something like a superhero, and I think that's what they were messing about with. Absolutely. Absolutely. Absolutely agree with you 110%. Because let me tell you, the, 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 the cool thought here is, is that there are some people on this planet that truly are not affected by the construct in, in the way that most of us are. It's because they are so shrouded in their own space that nothing else seems to infiltrate um, they're, they're dense matter in a different way, in a, in a very good way. And these are the scientists that, that say, I want to do this because this is what I need to do. So whether or not we maybe agree with maybe their procedures or not, I don't know. But they're compelled to do this thing. They're compelled to figure out how can we make this different. How, how can we take this? They, they're curious enough and they understand enough going, we're not utilizing near what we have the potential for. For me, there's a partial excitement to that because some of these people really do have a lot of integrity. Some of them do not. But it's duality. That's what this planet is. So, how do we get our memories back, Rebecca? That will probably. Uh, how, make... how do we? How would he get? How do we get our talents back? You know, from all of our, dub, you know, people who are from mixed bloodlines like myself um, might find that there there are some hidden useful things that you could do with all that DNA. Oh, for sure, for sure. Um, one of the things that I wanted to get to this week, and we're just not going to have the time, is um, is an exercise that I wanted to take everybody through. So I want you to write this down for next week. That, that how do we get our, how do we stimulate um, our DNA to awaken, awaken, yeah, to awaken ourselves, right? Um, uh, awaken our DNA. Okay. Our gene pool. Um, this is part of what I wanted to get to. I was actually being shown this for about the last 24 hours, so I wanted to share it, but we're just not going to have time. So we will do that next week. Um, it'll be a really, really cool show. Uh, so next week we're going to move beyond the construct to some tools and education. And what I would love for is for the people out there that are listening or will listen to this prior to next week's show is to send in some questions. Uh, questions are the coolest thing ever because so you might have a question that somebody else wants to ask. They might be uncomfortable or don't know how to, to word it. Please, please, please send me your questions or uh, type them into the chat box for next week or save them for next week. We can start out with a QA and a if you want. Um, we can just do whatever we want, but that would be um, really, really helpful to answer questions. Um, we're, we're really behind schedule, um, so but I did want to leave everyone uh, with a couple of things. It's number one is my book, The Great Revealing, is now available for sale on my website. That's journeyswithrebecca.com. Um, and you just go to the book section and please check it out. This is all information from the OM. They talk a, an awful lot about all different kinds of things, so it is available. Um, also available on my website is the Tarot, the Intuitive Approach, along with the audio companions. Um, and... Uh, once I have uh, enough people for next year, I would be happy to do a class um, for those that purchase the book and the audio companion, and then you would get a discount for that uh, because you did purchase the book. So that's another thing that's um, available. The other thing is, is I'm now doing an advanced class on timeline, uh, uh, past life timeline. But this is more of an integration where I'm going to take you outside of your reincarnation wheel. And it was so it's prior to you being in this, involved in this. So this can take you to a source of what you might call a home planet, a home world, a race, a species, which will also help you in 
very much along the same lines of what we're talking about, which is to access old memories, skills, and tools, which will also be very, very beneficial. Um, I'm doing another class next, the beginning of next year. I just did one on Sunday. I'm going to be doing another class next year. Um, it's very limited, only four people. So if you haven't taken the other class that I've done, which is the timeline and uh, past life regression, I have one more of those coming up in December. If you would take that, then you would be um, able to take the advanced class that I will be doing next year. So just lots of information, lots of information. So do go check out my website again. That's journeyswithrebecca.com. Excellent. Excellent. So uh, with that, we say goodbye. Where will... Do you want to do a thing? Uh, here it is. Until we meet again, where will your life's journey lead you? Many blessings, everyone. Good night.